and yet another deadly shooting. WVTM 13's Chip Scarborough live downtown. Still a very active investigation, Chip. Very active, Guy and Brittany. We can tell you this has been going on for roughly two hours now in a very busy Kingston neighborhood. People standing all around, obviously very upset and even angry about what's happened here tonight. Let's get you to some video now to explain where exactly we are. We're near the intersection of 9th Avenue North and 44th Place North. Officer Truman Fitzgerald tells us about 8 o'clock tonight, a group of people, two groups actually started shooting at each other. Numerous rounds fired. The call initially came in of three people being shot, but Officer Fitzgerald says when officers got here, they determined that just one person was shot. He unfortunately did not survive. Officer Fitzgerald also telling us numerous shot spotter calls came in around the time this happened. Uh, our shot spotter alerts have registered upwards to 90 plus rounds. Uh, we believe that took place um, in the middle of the Kingston neighborhood. We're talking 10 rounds, 15 rounds, 8 rounds, 20 rounds, 14 rounds, 6 rounds, all being fired in succession. And Officer Fitzgerald talked about the fact that it really is amazing that no one else was injured here tonight. Obviously been a very violent weekend. He says in all 10 people across the city of Birmingham have been shot. Police say they need your help. If you have any information about what happened here tonight, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 205-254-7777. You can remain anonymous. Live in the Kingston community of Birmingham tonight, Chip Scarborough, WVTM 13. If you hood educated, I'm glad you made it. Allow me to unfold my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a hood brother's point of view to all of you here, there, and everywhere. Now check me out. Oh my God. Hey, listen. Um, There's a, a video, right, on the internet that's going crazy because of the, the complete brutal and and utter disregard for life that goes on in this video. I'm talking about people are talking about they cried after watching this video. Um, some people are saying that after they watched this video, they just started praying because it's just so brutal. Like, and I'm telling y'all, man, I'm talking about, look, this video right here is probably one of the worst videos I have ever seen as far as um, somebody killing somebody, but not just killing the man. I'm talking about overkill, right? This video is brutal. Now, before we get into the video and before I give y'all the breakdown of the video, uh, let's talk about the man who lost his life. First, we want to extend our prayers to his loved ones and his friends. Uh, we want to extend our condolences, you know, to his son. Um, and, and, you know, we want to extend our condolences, you know, just to anybody that had that had to view that video that is a part of him and that loves him, right? Because to watch a family member or a friend or to see them get done like that, it'll, it'll make you go there, bro. I don't think, you know what I mean? Like to watch that and, it, and it's sad because it's all over the place. And this is just the world that we living in right now where these type of videos are public information. So I don't want people to be upset because I'm talking about the video. I don't want people to be upset because I got the video posted on my Patreon. Y'all know I, ain't, I can't post it on my YouTube because they'll take my channel down, demonetize my channel. And this video is that brutal. You got to believe me when I say this. So if you don't want to hear my voice, you don't want to hear me break the video down, you want to see it for yourself, I got the link to the Patreon 
at the top of the comment section. Go to the top of the comment section, hit that link and go on ahead and check out the video or go search for it yourself and, and, and check the video out, right? All right, now, so let's get into it, the brother. The brother goes by the name, and we wanna say rest in peace to the brother. The brother goes by the name of Black Juan. I'm talking about, listen, y'all, where he died at, uh, Kingston Projects in Birmingham, Alabama, where he died at is his stomping grounds. This man was born and raised in that part of town. I'm talking about like everybody know Black Juan in the Kingston Projects. However, everybody don't know Black Juan as being a good person. From my understanding and the reports that I'm getting, Black Juan was a gangster. I'm talking about this thing here, uh, stabbing, fighting, shooting, whatever. Black Juan was with that. Um, as far as him hustling and, and doing things like that, nah. Black Juan ain't had no time to be sitting on the block selling crack, selling weed, and all that old type of stuff. He ain't had time to be swiping cars and, you know, doing all that. Black Juan went and robbed the people that did all that. Black Juan was that type of brother that would sit back and let you sell all the dope in the world. And then here he come taking everything from you, everything. Now, from my understanding, that was his forte, stick up man. And he wasn't that type of stick up man where you know, sometimes a lot of the stick up guys, they wanna, you know, wear masks and you know, wanna be discreet so you don't know who they is so they can just continue to rob and rob and rob. But uh, Black One wasn't like that. Black Juan didn't care if you seen his face after he robbed you. Why? Because Black Juan understood that, hey, if you want to play, I'm going to put this on you. And anybody that he had any dealings with, they understood that. So a lot of the times when he robbed guys, they, they chalked it up to the game. They charged it to the game. Man, that's Black Juan, man. You know, he ain't, man, I ain't trying to get into the shootouts. I ain't trying to have this man sitting out in the bushes, you know what I'm saying, waiting on me to come home from a hard day of hustling. And then I got to deal with him trying to kill me every day. Like, people ain't want to deal with that. So they just, you know, a lot of people just excuse it. Hey, man, you know, whatever. Right? But not this time. I believe this time... He might have robbed the wrong brother, right? And from my understanding in the reports that I'm getting, right? There was another brother down there, a hustling brother, drug dealing brother, right? Getting money by the name of Rock, right? Now, having some compassion for Juan because truth be told, uh. Juan was a good dude to those around him. You see what I'm saying? He was a stand-up guy to those around him. He had people that loved him too. You know what I'm saying? He got people that, you know, that had his back. But if Juan peeped any uh, softness in you or anything like that, he got to have you. He got to have that. So... A brother by the name of Rock had some compassion for Black Juan and hit his hand. Here you go, brother. Go on here, get on. You know what I'm saying? Gave him some work. In other words, gave him some drugs to sell. Right? And the money ain't come back right. So Rock, being the drug dealer that he is, he coming, hey brother, hey, check it out, man. Um, I need that paper for that plug I done gave you, man. I, I need that, that, you know, I need my back ends. Uh, Black one wasn't going for it. Hey, man, I ain't, look, I ain't, nah. I ain't got no back ends for you, right? So, somehow, 
they decided to meet. Rock under the under Rock under the impression that he finna come and get some of his money from the plug that he gave uh, Black One. But that wasn't the plan. The whole time, Black Juan was baking his cake. You know, they say that down there in Birmingham, Alabama. When somebody just rocking you to sleep, how we say up here, we say we rock them to sleep. Down there, they say they, he baking the cake. So Black Juan baking his cake. He already got the plan. I'm finna off him. I'm finna kill Rock. They meet up. He took care of the business. He killed Rock. Wrong move. Rock got people that love him too. Rock wasn't no gangster like that. Not like Black Juan. He was a hustler. He was about his money. But he had people that loved him. So after he killed Rock, they was on him, but they didn't do nothing. They was kind of scared because this Black Juan, y'all, this man right here, I'm talking about from the reports that I'm getting, this like Freddy Cougar. I'm talking about, listen, this is like the boogeyman. Everybody's scared of the boogeyman, right? So Black Juan catch a violation. And I ain't talking about no gang violation. Even though, from my understanding, he was a part of the Bloods. He catch a violation, violated his parole or his probation, where he had to go sit down for a little minute. So he went back to the penitentiary. And word is, why he even in the penitentiary, y'all, this man right here is still putting in work. They saying that he done downed people in the penitentiary, that he done killed people in the streets, he done killed people in the penitentiary. They telling me like this man damn near got his own graveyard from him putting in work. This how cold blooded he is. So he just got out about what they say. They say April. They say Black One just got out the penitentiary in April. He go back to his old hood. Why not? This is stomping ground. This is where he come from. But the guys, these young boys, they ain't feeling what he did to rock. They ain't feeling that. So now they baking his cake. Yeah. You see how it work, y'all? Now they baking his cake. They rocking him to sleep. They making Black Juan believe that, hey, we ain't tripping on that, man. Come on back to the hood, man. That ain't that ain't nothing, bro. We ain't worried about that, man. You did what you had to do, man. We ain't tripping on what happened with Rock. We ain't tripping on that. And just for that moment, he slipped. He actually believed that they really ain't care too much about rock when they really did. So now to break down the video, I'm going to give y'all my bridge version and I'm going to give y'all my portion of understanding as to what I seen and what I viewed, right? And what it looked like to me. But before I do that, right? I'm going to allow his son to speak. And what I mean by that is this right here. Um, his son went to social media with everything that happened. And his son put it out there as to what he believed happened. Check it out. Y'all see that? The boy said, ain't, ain't no crying or none of that. Um, I'm standing on business. Uh, the boy say, uh, a blind man can see that they set us up. But that get back is a motherfucker. Those is his words, right? Now, being that now we understand what the son believes, 
let's go on. Let me break down the video for y'all. Um, as you look at the video, you see at the top right, you're going to see two men. One is Black Juan and one is another brother. Out of nowhere, both of these men just fall to the ground. Why? Because they shooting at each other. Now, it's being reports that Black Juan shot at him first. That's why he fell, but he pulled his thing out and shot back. And that's why Black Juan fell. But from my understanding, right, that he shot Black Juan first. That first time when he pulled his gun, he shot him. Now, as Black Juan is getting up, he's trying to backtrack, you know, to try to get away from this guy. Now, in all my uh, uh, hood education and everything that I done been, been through in the hood, uh, when you got a gun, you stand your ground. You know, you run for cover and all that old type of stuff. But if you in a shootout type close the way that they was, like you try to, you know, shoot and get out the way. But at the same time, you stand in your ground. In this video, it appears that Juan is trying to flee. He's trying to get away from this other man with the gun. And if you look close, the first time that Juan fall, it appears that he dropped his gun right then and there. I'm not 100% sure, but I pay close attention to detail. It appears that he dropped his gun right then and there. And that what led me to believe that no wonder why he's trying to flee because he ain't got his gun no more. Now, as he's trying to flee, this other guy is coming. He's coming towards him. And that made me think too, because usually, I don't care how gangster you is, you not running up on a person the way that he ran up on Black Juan when you know a person got a gun. He ran up on Black Juan as if he knew that he didn't have a gun. People are not that crazy. I don't care how gangster you is. You still try to preserve your life during the shootout. This man was running up as if Black Juan didn't have a gun. Now, when Black Juan falls to the ground, this man runs up on him, stands over him, hands like this, shooting him. During all this, Black Juan is kicking and fighting, and I'm talking about swinging and everything while he's being shot. Listen, y'all. I believe, and I could be wrong, because a lot of people say that's when Black Juan lost his gun, but I don't think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it appears that when Black Juan was doing all that fighting and scrapping and all that while he was on the ground and that man was standing above him, Black Juan snatched his gun. The man who was shooting him snatched his gun out his hand. And that led him to stop firing or, or, or stop, you know, stop trying to kill him because he snatched his gun out his hand. But not only that though, y'all, while he's snatching the gun out of that man's hand, there's a man, you see a man right there by a car that comes over to give Black Juan some aid and assistance. He starts firing his weapon at the man that's shooting Black Juan. The man that's trying to help Black Juan is none other than his son. his son trying to save his father's life. He bear witness, he watching a man stand over his father, firing a firearm like this here. So he ups his gun and he shoots. The man runs off. Now, like I said before, from my understanding and the way that that video looked, those are the two reasons why he ran off. Black Juan son shooting at him and Black Juan snatched his gun. But 
Excuse me. But for some reason, y'all, Black Juan didn't grab the gun that was on the ground. I don't know if he just was panicking. I don't know if he just was in a frenzy. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because like, listen, let me tell y'all something. A lot of people say what they will do, but you don't know what you're going to do until you get in that situation. Now, Black Juan starts to get up and try to walk away, but he falls again. I'm only assuming the reason why he falls is because he shot up. And his body is not cooperating with him. His brain is saying, get up, run to the car, get to get to some shelter. But his body is not his body is not functioning right because it's full of holes. So now once he falls again, he crawls to the car and it looked as if he was finna get inside of the car. The car door is open and his son is sitting right there with the gun. But instead, he crawls to the back of the vehicle. While he's doing this, the guy that ran off, that just that, that, that just stood over him, runs around to a group of men. The next thing you know, you see this group of men disperse. Not when he actually get there, in a couple of seconds later, they just disperse. And once they disperse, here he comes again. This time, you can see the gun in his left hand. He runs over to the car. Notice that uh, Black Juan is just laying there and his son is sitting right there while his son is trying to see like where is who and what's going on. The man comes around the car and starts shooting Black Juan some more. But one thing you got to pay close attention to, when the son uh, ran away, he shot at this man. He shot at him while this man was standing over his father. He shot at him a couple of times. This man didn't care. This man did not care nothing about that. He stood over Black Juan, y'all and put the gun directly to his head and blew his brains out. While he's doing that, the son is crouching down, you know, trying to keep cover. But never once did this man even aim the gun at his son. After he shoots a uh, black one in the head, he hits him with the gun. Then he runs off. When he runs off, Black One's son is trying to get into the car, I guess to start the car so that he can flee from the scene. For some reason, the car don't start. This man comes back. Listen to what I'm telling y'all. This man comes back to Black One. He must be out of bullets because he commenced to pistol whooping. Black one. I'm talking about y'all listen. The man is already deceased. This man is coming all the way from back here with this gun. And he hitting this man in the head, in the face with the gun multiple times. He's already dead, but he don't care. He's hitting him multiple times. Now, during all this, a lot of people might say, hey, uh, why ain't Black One son shooting this guy? He's beating his father while his father is dead. The only thing that I can believe that he ran out of bullets. Or his gun jammed. But usually when the gun jammed, you can cock one out and put one back up in there and you back in action when the gun jammed. The only reason I believe that he didn't fire his gun or try to do anything is because his gun was empty. He fired all his bullets. He ain't had no more. The son finally get the car started. He pulls off. Both of the car doors is open. He pulls off. While this man is still back there. Beating his father with the gun. All in the head. All in the face. He beating him. This man is, I'm talking about y'all, he ain't even worried about uh, 
Black Juan son car pulling off or nothing. He don't care about nothing. He's so focused on Black Juan. And I remember when I first seen that, I said, I wonder why he go like that. Like, why did he go so hard on the brother like that? But when I understood and I heard what type of man that black one is or was, I understood why. He knew I got to kill him. If I don't kill him, he's gonna come back and he ain't gonna play. He gonna kill up everything. Black Juan didn't play. So he understood that, look, I gotta get him out of here. If this the last thing I do, if I don't, I'm dead. I got to kill this man. I gotta make sure that this man is not breathing and that he is not living no more because if I don't, he gonna kill me. Listen, y'all, this whole demonstration was, I'm talking about, was a cold-blooded one. I'm talking about, man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't never bear witness nothing like that. But the cold part about all of it is this right here. This is a lesson. Everything that you seen, everything that you seen in that video, or you go to the Patreon and check that video, it's a lesson. For all you young brothers, for all you wanna be gangsters, this is a lesson. Because this video right here strikes fear. This video right here make you think twice. Wait, wait a minute, hold on. I don't know if I wanna. Because you got real gangsters out there like that that will do you just like that man did Black Juan. I'm talking about with no regard for your life. So think about that. Think about this. When you see that video, think about it. Do I really want to be in this gangbang lifestyle? Do I really want to be out here robbing and stealing and shooting and killing people? Do I really want to be a part of that life? Because looking at this right here, what I just seen? Nah, you don't want to. Listen, y'all. People praying. People don't even know Black One. They don't even know his, his pedigree. They don't know his history. But just because they seen what happened to him in that video, people crying, people praying. Because when you see what's going on, it's like, what's wrong? Why is this man doing this? But you understand now, Black One won no joke. And like I said, for all you young brothers, and some of you classic brothers that still running around trying to hang with these young dudes and these young boys and you see how they doing? Because uh, Black One wasn't no youngster. He wasn't no youngster. But he's still playing in the game. He's still out there in them streets. These young boys nowadays, they think everything is a video game. They don't care about their life. You see, they did all that on camera. They understood that them cameras was out there. Like I told y'all in my last video, man, they'll kill you on camera. These boys don't care about that. So the best thing that you can do, especially you young brothers, if you if, if y'all let y'all young people see this video, this is a lesson. Look, this is what game bangers do. Uh, you want to be tough? You want to be in the hood and stuff like this? This this is what they do. Now, the other cold part, the other cold-blooded part about this is this right here. Word on the street in Alabama, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, in Birmingham, that that man that stood over Black One and killed him and did all that to Black One died, shot, killed a day later, not even 24 hours. Y'all really want to be gangsters? 
y'all really want to play? Y'all really want to be in them streets and, 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 you know, think it's cool to take pictures with your guns and all this old type of stuff? Y'all really want to be in that? Come on, man. This is, listen, this is real life. This is not a joke. If you not about that life, get out the way. Quit playing. Because you got real gangsters out here that'll do you just like that man just did, Black One. And you got real gangsters out here that would do you just like they just did him. This man can't even... I mean, you know how they do, y'all. They they kill somebody, then they get on the internet, they start mocking the death, and he ain't even get a chance to do none of that. Why? Because the get back was just so fast. The get back was just that fast. Y'all, you did this? Okay, then come on, we got to take care of that. Now it's finna be tit for tat. It's finna be tit for tat. The Kingston Project's probably finna divide. It's probably finna be a divide in them Kingston projects because you got those that love Black One and you got those that love Rock. And you got those that love the other man that just lost his life too. Cold-blooded demonstration. This hood educated, not lame related. Peace and love and y'all take care of yourself out there. If I said anything that caused you to think, please hit that subscribe button if you ain't subscribed to the channel already. And if you're feeling generous, please make a small donation to the channel. Uh, before I depart, let me give a shout out to some of the blessings that I received this week. Let me give a shout out to my homegirl, OG Shot Town Sweetie, for the $20 cash app. Thank you, sister, and I appreciate it. And let me give a shout out to Al Barrow for the $5 cash app. This is Hood Educated, not Lane Related. Peace and love, and y'all take care of yourself out there.